Well, four states, Connecticut, Minnesota, Vermont, and Wisconsin holding primaries tomorrow. In Wisconsin, the former U.S. Marine Kevin Nicholson and state Senator Leah Vukmir are running in the Republican Senate primary in the farm state. But President Trump's tariffs could reshape that Senate race, which is the number two dairy supplier in the country. Capri Cafaro is an executive in residence at American University School of Public Affairs. And John Jordan is a member of the Hoover Institution's Board of Overseers. Good to see both of you, Capri and John. Mm-hmm. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. John, I want to begin with you. Uh, if you look at this one particular race in Wisconsin, the farm state, you have two Republicans going for the Democrat Terry uh, Baldwin Senate seat. But the farmers there are concerned because Mexico is putting tariffs of about 25 percent on their dairy products. So that affects them. Uh, We know that for the first time since 1984, Wisconsin actually voted Republican. But what happens in this particular race, John? Well, first of all, uh, Mexico and the United States are engaged in bilateral trade negotiations right now. And all indications are is that that may be resolved fairly quickly. The situation with Canada, however, is very different. Canada has historically had, has been very protectionist with regard to dairy products, having a, not only a 270% tariff, but also a rigid quota system and almost a price-fixing scheme within Canada. That notwithstanding, the U.S. is, Wisconsin's were on $133 million surplus with Canada. But, uh, but but no, the, there's a, another dimension to this, and that is the unfiltered milk, uh, a lower quality milk that has somehow bypassed and been a, a crack through which uh, Wisconsin farmers can sell their milk into Canada. But that was closed last year. So as a result, Mexico, uh, excuse me, Wisconsin exports into Canada of milk have really been dropping for the last year and a half, even prior to the current trade dispute. Mm-hmm. Capri, what do you think? These are some local issues, but they certainly speak on a national scale. Uh, No question about it. I mean, Wisconsin uh, is, I think, emblematic of a number of states um, where you have, whether it's dairy producers or pork producers that are concerned about the impact of tariffs. But, you know, there is no question that particularly in the dairy industry, uh, you know, the the costs um, to produce have often outweighed the amount of money uh, that dairy producers actually get when they sell their milk into, uh, uh, into the system. So, you know, you have a place like Wisconsin that produces over 26 percent percent of of uh, the nation's milk, as you mentioned at the beginning of the segment, it's number two in the country. So, um, you know, it seems as if there uh, mm-hmm. in Wisconsin, from what I have what, from what I have read, uh, mm-hmm. a number of the farmers rather have trade than aid, yep. so to speak. And both of the Republican uh, individuals running in the primary have embraced um, President Trump's trade proposals. Now, remember, Donald Trump only won Wisconsin by about one percent of the vote. So his coattails might not be as strong here as they have have been in other states. And Trump, I believe, John, and correct me if I'm wrong, is very popular among Republicans in Wisconsin. But how do Democrats feel about him there? Well, he's very popular. It's a, it's a deeply partisan, deeply divided state. It all comes down to in the general election. Will the rural vote, despite the trade difficulties and what Trump is was doing with trade to try to extract better deals from our trading partners, will they stick with him and be patient through this? There's indications that he will be, but uh, it's three months till November, and there's also the, uh, the harvest of all of the other crops there in Wisconsin as well. So it all depends. Will the rural vote, will they turn out in those yeah. numbers? And if they do, um, it could be competitive in November. And- Or will they sit home? I mean, they could just sit home as well and not vote for either candidate. That is a very good point. And if you look at the state senator there, the Democrat, Terry Baldwin, she's one of 10 Senate Democrats that are running for re-election in states that voted Donald Trump. Capri, John, thank you very much. Thank you.